Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video that is for sure a blast from the past. I did a video not too long ago where I was trying out some cult products from back in the days, 2014, 15, 16, that I hadn't tried from before and also some things that I had tried. I will leave that video down below in the description box. And I got some comments there that reminded me of an era where these were the colorful palettes that were... <laughs> So I ended up buying one of these from eBay. I think I bought it for like $15 or something. This is a shiny, I have no idea what that brand is, 120 color eyeshadow palette, bold and bright. So I am gonna be using this one today and we are gonna talk a little bit about what bright eyeshadow used to be and where we are today. And if you haven't been here before, if this is your first video here, I would love to see you subscribe because this is definitely a channel all about fun, bright, colorful makeup, just trying to have a little bit of fun with makeup. And I am so excited to be digging into this one today, just reminiscing a little bit about what makeup used to be. So like I said, I bought this from Amazon. I can put it down below, or did I buy it from eBay or Amazon? I think I bought it from Amazon. I did have one of these similarly back when I started YouTube. It comes, oh my God, it's so big. That's what she said. Uh, it comes like this. <laughs> Shane, I, I didn't have this specific brand, but as you can probably tell, there are dupes within this palette. These are, some of these are so similar that you definitely did not need all of these in, the, in this palette. And I think that like when you look at this palette versus looking at a palette that's doing a full rainbow in a little bit more modern way, let's be honest, um, I can actually pop up a picture of this one next to a rainbow palette from Blend Bunny. If you wanted a high quality rainbow palette, that definitely could be, a, I will link that down below as well. There is definitely a difference of what we used to see rainbow makeup being and what it has evolved into now, because a lot of these are light or mid-tone shades. There is only a black, oh my God, can I get rid of this one? Wait. Can you get rid of this one? I don't know if I'm doing this correctly. Okay, so there is a black here, and this is basically the, the, the dark color that is offered. So I'm gonna have to deepen these colors up with a black, because as you can tell, these are all the same depth. There's not a lot of difference in between how light they are, how deep they are. They're all pretty light to mid-tone. There are no pale shades and there are no dark shades except the white and the black. And like I said, I used to have one of these and I used to remember working with it. And I, I, I this is my experience from these palettes. They are cheap eyeshadows where some of them are good but when you get a good one it's more of a stroke of luck than it is a stroke of genius also this whole palette smells like death but i also will say if you're starting out with color and you really want to have a bunch to choose from and you're not picky with quality or color selection that much you just want to see what kind of colors you enjoy on yourself this isn't the worst thing that you could do but yeah i just I just want to revel, I just want to revel in the good old days and have a little fun with this one. So let's do a straight up rainbow look all over my eyes and see what we can do with these. I think most of these are shimmers. I think this is like an 80-20 shimmer to matte ratio. Okay, I am already <laughs> regretting this. Um, okay, so we're, we're gonna try and do, uh, I don't know why some of these are marbled. I, I think the reason why some of these are marble it's just because they wanted to get some shades that look a little different because you can tell this entire row here, babe, that's the same color. That's, <laughs> that's, that's like, and, and telling the, this from experience, that's like when you tell a brand you want to see a sample of a grass green, they send you 10 different and you say yes. And they say which one and you say yes. And they say which one and you say all of them. That's the energy that that row was giving. So I think I'm gonna start with the black. There is a matte black down here. Honestly, do we really care which one I'm starting with? I don't think that that's the important part of this. I'm just gonna be popping some of these shadows on. I am gonna do my very best to work from darkest to lightest because I know that that is the best way to get shadows that maybe are not the best quality in the world to show up true to color. And I am not gonna try and build as many of them as possible. I'm also gonna try and pick a matte over a shimmer in any situation because I 
think that in the end that's gonna look the best. Not the most pigmented black I've tried in my entire life, but also not impossible to work with. It is a little sheer and it doesn't blend out immaculate in the edges, but maybe that's not the end of the world because we are going to be going over with other colors. Let me see if I can clean this brush off just a smidgety smidge. And I am going to see if I can find something that looks like a dark blue that doesn't have shimmer. That doesn't seem to be an option. Okay, so there are no true matte blues in here. So whatever I pick is fine, I guess. So I'm just going to something it's just this weird half satin sheen on it it's not a shimmer it's not even a satin it's just a almost matte okay okay i think that's gonna be fine not the worst i've seen in my life doable again i'm packing and very lightly blending on the edge that's definitely the way to save an eyeshadow that you are a little bit unsure about. Okay, so I kind of want to use something that's a little purpley orchid pink. Maybe? This is a matte, so let's blend with that, but let's go in with something like this. I don't know if you can see. This, and then blend out with like a hot pink, because that seems to be like one of the few, like, I don't even know which one I... I'm just bobbing in between some of these. I don't know which one I even pointed at. They're all the same. They're all the same. Do you remember the craze of these? Because like I said, I remember having one of these and I remember doing some looks and being like, well, this is fine. It's not amazing. And I feel like, because here's the thing. I know that BH Cosmetics had some of these palettes and I know that there was a bunch of brands that did these. I mean, let's be honest. It's not like they had the formula themselves. They were just slapping their name on something that is what we today would call private label. And there are so many layers to private label as well. And I've talked about that on my channel that like, oh my God, the sheen on that one. That private label is like, it's not just, there are so many, oh, they're so weak. there are so many layers to what private label can mean. It doesn't necessarily just mean somebody bought an all dumb palette and slapped their name on it but i think that in this case of these bigger palettes i do think that that is actually what it meant that shade is kind of pitiful let's go into that hot pink matte instead okay here we're getting some pigment but yeah this is oh i should definitely have chosen this one instead those purples were not it Okay, I'm going to go back to that blue and I'm actually going to see if I can just put that in the bridge between and let's just forget that that purple ever happened. What purple? Don't know her. I mean, I will say this is a little sad. A little sad, but we'll make it work. I'll, I'm going to pick any green in that green roll. Uh, You shy? Okay, let's not do that green. There has to be one that's better than that. Okay. Uh, let's just see what we can do with this green situation. I mean... I feel like this entire look is going to be a little bit like watercolors because it's not going to be the kind of opaque and bright result that I want to have because these shadows are pretty I mean weak. Let's do a lighter green over here. And for me, I don't like that result. I want stuff to be like pigmented and I want them to show up. And I don't know if I think that this that's what these are doing. But I remember when people were crazy about these palettes and I will say I have tried three of these big rainbow palettes from three different brands, uh, three different brands. 
and they all looked a little bit different on the inside. Uh, one of them was one of those palettes, I'm using a yellow, uh, in case you can't tell. Well, you basically cannot. Well, I had three different brands with three different palettes that looked almost the same. If you know, you know, they looked almost the same. And I will say the the quality between these uh, three palettes were fairly similar. They were this. Sometimes you would hit a shadow that actually performed pretty good, but overall they were just like slightly colored setting powder. I mean, that's something. It's, it's giving I've slept in this, but except me sleeping in it. And I even remember people saying, oh, if you want a colorful palette, just get one of these big palettes. They're all you need. First of all, ma'am, they're not. And they have all the shades you need. They have so much to choose from. A lot of them are the same though, let's be honest. And they are just as good quality as any other colored eyeshadow. And you know what? That might've been th true because I will be honest if with that much good colorful makeup to choose from when I started YouTube, which was 2015. There were a couple of brands that did really good colorful makeup, but it was all indie brands, except, uh, which now that we think about it with today's goggles on, it seems a little crazy, but Urban Decay. I remember the Vice palettes they used to do and that rainbow palette that they had. Um, this is not horrible, not, I've done, I've done worse. I've done worse. And with that, I wanted to say that yes, in 20, probably 14, 15, these were probably the like shadows that you could expect. And I understand that if some people try these shadows and think that this is what colorful shadows are today, you might think like, no, big hard pass. And I don't blame you. There are, you see, there are some more that look like actual shimmers, this lime and this yellow. Should we try those? Okay, okay. Yeah, well, it's a little weak, but maybe if I like spray it and really pack it on, we can make that happen. You know, I just have to convince it with a little setting spray and a prayer maybe. Usually I think that you can get an equal good result with your finger, but this one, I really needed to dig into this one to get some product up here. And if you do a brush and you just wiggle back and forth, you can just pick up a little bit more product than you would with your finger. It's still not super impressive. It is definitely a traditional shimmer that we all knew from 2015. But that is doable. That is doable. It's definitely the best shadow we have tried so far. This one and the black one, I would say. And I feel like that yellow one looked like it could be something too. Why do I feel like this look is giving me Darkwing Duck? People are going to say like, no, the Joker. And I'm like, what do you mean? Darkwing Duck. Or maybe Illidan. If you know, you know. I'm just using a little bit more of the black out here to make sure that it's not totally taking... I was going to say taking over the mats. Well, there's not that many mats in this look to take over, but I do feel like this black moment that we had going out here that was actually like going pretty strong. It's actually working out pretty good for us. So let me just switch the brush around and do this yellow situation and we can try that over here oh yeah definitely once i was able to wiggle my brush in there and just pick up a little more i definitely was able to make this work i will say from experience it is easier to formulate a shimmer shadow than it is to formulate a, a matte shadow so I'm not surprised that the, the ones that look like shimmer in this palette work out a little bit better for us. I think I'm gonna keep the shimmers up here though. 
But I think that's looking pretty good. Do I have something that I can use uh, over here? Okay, I want to do a white. This one seems a little vanilla. And this one seems to be a stark white. So I'm going to do the stark white matte. I love that I have to go like literally to another room when I am showing you this one. So let's do the stark white. Oh, that is not super opaque. I'm trying to pack it on, but mm -mm. let's let's try this other one. See if it's giving yeah, it's giving a similar result. Maybe we should try a shimmer. There is one next to it. That's a shimmery white. You know what? Let's try that one and just because I don't want it to be I don't want it to be this weak. Just a little bit in the absolute inner. That's also not super convincing. Ah, that's the thing though. It's like 120 colors in here, but only 20 of them you can do anything with. And that's the whole thing. Like, like I said, because that's how it, this palette feels. It feels like they gave you all of the samples. And technically, this palette should have been edited down into a 16 pan. But they just gave you all the shadows. The good and the bad. And I don't know if you needed that. Is this the best look I've ever done? No, but it is definitely doable. Uh, this situation here is going to give me nightmares. Uh, that blend there is not nice and it's very sheer, especially here, but it's doable. I've seen worse. You've seen worse. We've all seen worse, okay? I'll be right back. I mean, if you look at this and you like squint a little bit and just from a distance, a blurring filter would help. It looks pretty okay. I think the color combo is beautiful. I'm not loving this frosty moment here not living for that. It's also really shoppy over here, but maybe the frostiness is honestly helping with that shoppiness. I think the lid color honestly looks beautiful. I don't love how the yellow disappeared here, but I have had worse looks on than this one. And again, this is the fourth one of these kind of palettes that I'm trying. They're all pretty much the same. I'm going to be honest with you. People used to say that these were the bee's knees. These aren't really that good. And if you haven't tried Colorful Shadows since you tried these, do try Colorful Shadows again. I will say that a lot of things with makeup have been good for years and years and years. Lipsticks, eyeliners, mascaras, they have been good. Like there's been a good product around for a really long time. Eyeshadow? Eyeshadow has had the biggest glow up ever just the past 5-10 years just from when I started doing makeup online to where we are now with eyeshadow where you can find like really high quality eyeshadows at Target um, on honestly eBay or from indie brand that's where I find my absolute best eyeshadows I just find it to be so fascinating from where we started, what we used to think were good, and where we are right now. Because I really think the bar has moved a bit. And that is the one item with makeup that I think has had the biggest glow up, the biggest change just from out the years that I've been here on YouTube. I would love to hear your thoughts. And I will say it was really fun diving into this one again. If you would ever like to see anything more, do let me know and please let me know your experiences from big palettes like this. Which one did you have? Did you have the one from Coastal Sense? Did you have the one from BH Cosmetics? I would love to hear all your thoughts down below. And please don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And I will see you again real soon for a new video. Bye!